in my day word Ephesians the whole book of Ephesians I tried this morning it, uh, I had something about every chapter and by faith uh, I just made a landing halfway through Ephesians 1 <clears throat> let's see how it goes luckily second service open-ended amen smile <laughs> okay what I want to say from every book in the Bible every chapter my brother my sister God can give you hundreds different themes from every verse there's such a richness 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 and a depth from the Word of God that for eternity you will see more and more and more of the depth of the riches of the glory of God in everything no boring day in heaven amen but uh, one theme that I want to focus on today and it seems to me a, a few other Sundays whenever that will be it's all about stability you can write that down stability in that what you have as a calling in that what you have from God now first of all stability is not how stable are you on in your circumstance in your failures in your success in your emotions it, it doesn't start there it starts out of the context of time before the heaven and the earth was before time you were there in Christ Jesus everybody say in Christ Jesus so when you challenge yourself about stability the main key would be who are you in Christ Christ in you and you in Christ amen may God help you to understand that then it's not a struggle then it's not a struggle how to bring a change in your emotions change in your circumstances change from the failure to success it will first of all start with just Christ and him and you're looking into time looks uh, sounds a little bit freaky but you look into time into the place that we call time born in the heart of the father as we always say right from the beginning and then God had this desire to have this relationship with you and me and that's why he created us amen but let's let's just jump in okay Ephesians 1 verse 3 praise to the God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ with every spiritual blessing everybody say every every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus why 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 he has blessed us with everything for he chose us in him he didn't choose you in any other place he chose you in him now some people they believe in the past in this um, what's that in English <clears throat> where God said I love you I don't love you you go to heaven you go to hell predestination based on on this scripture that is not the truth for he chose us in him before the creation everybody say before the creation he chose God chose that in Christ will be found Peter John James Mary and they will be found in the Son and Jesus will position him as son and where they will be found in him they will also position themselves as sons towards me as father as father God so he predestined it before he created heaven and earth before that Ruan was there for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be what to be holy that is set apart for him alone unique everybody say set apart unique that's holy to be set apart for him and blameless in his sight beautiful in his sight in love beautiful in his sight in love everything in love he predestined us for adoption to sonship predestined means from the beginning he decided your destiny will be to be a son 
before everything he decided that you will be a son in the son jesus christ through jesus christ in accordance with what with his pleasure and will with his pleasure and will with his pleasure and will my brother my sister and his though his will comes from his pleasure from his desire from his dream and too many times when i walk when i walk in in a religion when i walk into a place where i want to the circumstances to change i want to know what i must do what i mustn't do then it's just god what is your will at least i'm asking what are you, what is his will but before i know that i must to come into the place of knowing his heart what is the purpose of his will what is the heart his heart in his will because you will not understand many many times you will not understand his will but if you know his jealous heart of love for you in a relationship many times his will will be to keep you confused to keep you in a place of total dependence on him to keep you in a place of when you look around you things are not necessarily the way that you always would want it to be but the purpose in his will is you for a love relationship as he predestined that before heaven and earth heaven and earth was created in you as crown of creation for the purpose of facilitating his desire let's say heaven and earth facilitate the desire of god but you are the essence of his desire so the heavens and earth are there to facilitate that desire because heaven and earth are there with you with a free will to do what god's standing back and say i want you to to desire me i want you to choose to honor me i want you to respond to me because my desire is this relationship is this relationship he had everything 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 but still he wanted more and that he predestined in his son he positioned himself as father and he positioned christ as the son and you in the son hello to have this relationship bless disease doesn't work in the council of the wicked but in the council of counselor in the way of the sinner but the way jesus or sit in the seat with mockers but sit in the seat where with who father son holy spirit but when you understand how to relate to one another in the body of Christ, then you will understand this concept. Are you with me? May God help you. He chose us in Him because before the creation of the world, to be holy, blameless in His sight, in love He predestined us for the adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with His pleasure and will. To the what? To the praise of his glorious grace to the praise of his glorious grace it sounds a lot but in in ephesians paul has this sentences of over five six seven eight verses it's all just one sentence so there's a lot of meaning in every word especially very intensely in ephesians but the pleasure and when you understand his pleasure his desire his heart then you not just okay with his will that you then you will go for his will and do his will to do what to the praise of his glorious grace where does that fit in his glorious grace deserves all praise if there's praise it's not just i praise god because my circumstances changed i praise god because this changed and that changed oh i'm excited no praise belong to his glorious grace and because this awesome beautiful that's glorious beautiful grace that god has for you and me just because that is true praise is given because this thing about praise this thing about honoring him this thing about praising him with my heart and with my lifestyle i do that because this praise is not my praise it's not just the acknowledgement of you did well lord yes i evaluate and you did well that's why i praising him when he has done something 
as if you a father praising a son for what he has done right you're not the father he's not the son hello you praise him because he's worthy of praise and that praise the whole concept of praise and honor belongs is part of his awesome beautiful grace his beautiful enablement that he gave you to become a son and a daughter of God <clears throat> so you give what belongs to him the enemy tried to steal it yes and you must praise yourself you must praise that one you must pray you need to receive praise from people people need to say wow and you've done it. They did. That guy didn't say thank you. Um, he's messing with me. I'm not going to do it for him again. Oh, I thought you did it for God. But if you live, if you die, whatever you do, you need to do it for God. Amen. Because in laying down your life, you acknowledge that if there's any honor to be given, any honor to be given in heaven and on earth, it belongs to him. The concept of praise belongs to him. And you cannot steal like they say, you cannot steal the limelight. <laughs> Hello. But many times we are hurt because we were too much in the focus. I'm hurt because they didn't do that. They didn't do that. Okay. If you are on some other throne, yes. Oh, but, but they really hurt me. Yes. By fact, yes. And God wants to bring healing to you. Yes, God wants to bring healing to your life. Why? So that you are, can be in a place... Of honoring him in spite of what they will do because people till the day you die will disappoint you they can hurt you they can belittle you they can talk behind your back because not tomorrow they're suddenly going to be perfect everybody around you now why you expect them to be perfect and you can be okay and the people must understand if you make mistakes why why no I don't expect them to be perfect now then then you know that people are going to hurt you. If they're not going to be perfect tomorrow, people are going to hurt you. People are going to disappoint you. That's why I don't trust anybody. The one that you cannot trust the most is your own heart. The word says, the most deceiving is your own heart. You cannot trust your own heart according to the word of God. That's why the most of everything, anything, anything, you must guard your heart. Because from there is the springs of life, the well of life. <sighs> you are still here? All right. Praise the Lord. So, to the praise of His glorious grace. Of His glorious grace. In Him we have everything. Okay, verse 9. Let's go. He made known to us. He made known to us the mystery of His will according to his good pleasure he must made known to us the mystery of his will his will will be a mystery and god will organize that you will not know his will but he has made known to you the mystery of his will here is the mystery hello here is the mystery the word of god is the mystery but he has made it known how through the demon of religion and performance oh man the devil can quote some scriptures to you that you didn't even study that you didn't even know about <clears throat> but the mystery of his will the word of god we see father son holy spirit and holy spirit god said the holy spirit will he be here with a mandate with a purpose and that is to remind you of the word of god and to explain to you the word of god reminding is to and for you to understand where do you come from you don't come from baboon you don't come from baboon you don't come from a big bang everybody say no big bang no baboon the bang amen yes <laughs> let it be so in jesus name and holy spirit will explain that to you but he cannot remind you if you didn't and if you have not heard it yet the word of god if you have not heard it yet how must he remind you of the word if you never studied the word now with computers let me teach you something okay why are you laughing some guys that know that i don't know maybe a lot you know there's a certain program that you use 
in your computer. Now, if you don't know the program, you sit like a clown in front of the laptop. You have that revelation. You can keep it. You will go tick, 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 and that's all that will happen. You will know not what to do. Now, this is the program. You have a computer. But if you don't know the program, no, this is too difficult. Okay. You don't understand. You are struggling with a computer. The only reason because you don't know the program. You're struggling with life because you don't know the program. Just come to learn the program. If you're struggling with a computer, oh, you want to give up, you're becoming depressed, you can become frustrated, you, you, are, you feel a failure. You... What's your problem? Go and read how it works. Go and figure out the program. Tell your neighbor, figure out the program. Come on, man. And for that, even go to somebody and somebody explain to you the program. That's logic if you have five brain cells. And all of you have. And go to somebody. And let them explain to you the program. <sighs> so if you know the program, you can do a lot of things on that computer. You can do a lot of things with your laptop. If you know the program. Because it's ex everything is accessible, etc., etc., etc. So get to know this program. Okay. And then... Your program will not be determined by your, let me say, your, your daily program. Then your program for today is not determined by what is my daily program. Oh, I must do this, and then I must do that, and then I must do that. No, 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 no. It's according to, you've been programmed to do what? I've been programmed to do whatever I'm supposed to do in, in performance or in stress or in crisis management. But I call it crisis management, and many times... Not necessarily crisis management, but you, you manage your day. You manage your day with a program that you don't know how to work the program. Just because you didn't read how the program works. So logic. So, so lot, such a lot of logic in it. Hey? So get to know the word. If I ask how many scriptures do you know here, and please not... Not with a demon of religion, because the devil also knows the scriptures. But it's how you relate with the scriptures. How the word is living. Everybody say living. living. Living in you. What are you doing with that? What are you doing with your program? Tell your neighbor, what are you doing with the program? Come on, man. Okay. Predestined according to the plan. In him... We were also chosen. This is verse 11. Verse 11. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him. We were chosen, predestined, be before there was an option of a destiny. Predestined, before destiny could be formed. Predestined for an excellent, excellent life with an excellent, excellent destiny. But me and you can make some horrific destiny with it all. Because humanity were bought with a price in Christ Jesus. He paid for everyone. Everyone. On the cross he showed that every everyone is intensely, intensely, excellently valuable. But you can decide. I don't believe that. I will not go for it. And the enemy can deceive you in such a way that you become his comedy. He can just sit and laugh at you because of the rubbish that you believe about yourself. Because somebody said it and it's not what was according to the program. If it's not according to the program, virus, get it out. Oh, I must believe the virus. I must go with the virus, you know. I have this relationship with the virus. Virus sit with me, virus speak to me, virus... Whatever the virus do, I must do what the virus is. Hello? Are you with me? That, that virus of rejection, that virus of, of tension, that virus of comparing you to others, and, uh, and that virus of what they say about me. Oh man, when, when five people are going to talk behind your back tomorrow, what are you going to do? Oh, I'm going to close my heart. I'm fed up with them. I'm finished with them. 
Uh, you will not say it in a bad way. No, no, no. Just walk away from them, you know. You don't need that people in your life. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you are supposed to go and show them the love of Christ. Many times people are frustrated, irritated, and talk behind the back of others about some other people because they have a hell of a lot of issues in their own life. They have a major, major problem with themselves. The guys that, that belittle others. The guys that talk behind the back of others about others. The uh, guys that are feeling threatened by this one or threatened or try to be the best or bragging about they, what they can do and, what, and feeling sorry for themselves because they couldn't do this. They have issues, man. Because somewhere they're supposed to understand God has predestined before the creation of heaven and earth, predestined for them to have an excellent, excellent future. Unless you tell me today, Jesus failed. And what was predestined for you was just a hell of a horror movie. Who the freak will say that? Hopefully nobody. What about let's believe the truth. Okay. Come to know the program. Please. As Holy Spirit will open it up for you. But let Holy Spirit open it up for you. Because the enemy will be there. Very, 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 very quickly. Quickly to, to give you some interesting scriptures. So that you can be discouraged. Because you don't know what he says. You don't understand. So many people didn't understand Jesus and later after they got the miracle they just left him because they, it was too rough but if I sit with all the other voices how will I learn how will I learn oh come on guys so now you go and you sit there at the rugby and and you must focus because before the time it was planned that that team will win and you know that you know that you know that that team will win. What is the worst if they lose? And you know they made this pathetic, pathetic lot of mistakes. With the soccer. You're not angry when it's like a team that you know. You know they are from Khwarabara Knara land. There is not. And that from their land this team and that team. Oh, come on man. Are you with me? And you're not angry at them when they lose. First time in a long, first time in a long time. Romania, part of the soccer um, World Cup. And they, one team got in there and they saw these guys. They bring their clothes with in plastic bags. And that type of stuff. And there was just this other team that decided, no, this is not going to go. And they made sure they got the sponsors, they got, took the money from themselves and bought them some excellent stuff. Oh, that's good, man. That's good. Well, maybe because I love Romania a lot also. But, but it was this team and they came in and they didn't do good uh, in the soccer, but nobody was angry at them. Angry at them. But the guys that you know, they... They are there, they're supposed to win. They suppose they are predestined to win because one plus one is two. And then they made this pathetic mistakes and they lost. You are angry, why? First of all, not because they lost, because but because you know their potential, you know what they could have done. So be angry at yourself, but not in the name of performance. But be angry with your flesh that want to take you away from the potential that God has placed in you. Predestined to be a winner. Predestined to have an excellent life. Predestined to come on to earth to express a life. And say, God, in spite of not understanding your will, I love you because your purpose, the purpose, the purpose of your will is just good. Jeremiah 29, 11. Hey, for I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to... Give you, to prosper you, to give you hope and a future. So you know the purpose of the plans. You don't understand the plans always. So in performance, you can have a hell of a life as a Christian and it's just one struggle. Or you can decide, I want to come to know, to know my father's heart, to know my father's heart. And then even if I don't understand his will, I will do his will. I have the capacity to do his will if I know his heart. 
let's say, I have the capacity to do His will if I know His heart. Hello? When people don't move, you know, that's why I ask people to say something. And then when you see, uh, they're just meditating on the word. And you know, oh, you must call them forth from the deep. <laughs> Hallelujah. May God help us. Let us be awake. You won't believe it. At the, at the rugby, I don't know why I'm at this rugby. At that soccer game. At that soccer game. Halfway through the first half. No, it's taking too long now. It's taking too long. I cannot focus anymore. And they are 3-3. Three, three. And here we go into the end of the first half or end of the, of the game. Oh, I'm so tired. I, I cannot focus so long. You know, I cannot listen to a sermon when it goes beyond 30 minutes. You have such a faith that your body immediately responds. That after 30 minutes you cannot focus, you cannot concentrate. This is taking too long. Whatever. If Holy Spirit wants to open up something for, to you after 30 minutes or not, you will not allow Holy Spirit to do that because your faith says, I cannot concentrate more than 30 minutes. What a pathetic lie, not just even a lie. Oh, but the professional guy, you won't believe it. With that soccer game, after 30 minutes, you're not just, oh, I'm too tired, I cannot focus on the game anymore. <laughs> you are even more focused to the end. That's because that's the way you believe, that's you way you position yourself, put yourself into the game, put yourself in how you relate to this soccer, to the soccer game, to these guys. So you decide how you will position yourself towards the Word. Because Holy Spirit is excited about the Word. He's always ready, always ready to explain to you, always ready to remind you how excellent you are in Christ before, before, before the beginning of time. And how God has this excellent dream coming into fulfillment more and more and more. Living it as a dream into reality. Go with Holy Spirit. And find your stability as before time. And going so far for trillion, trillion light years after time. After the concept of time. Are you still here? Predestined us according to the plan of him who works out everything he works out everything with his plan in conformity with the purpose of his will the purpose of his will once again he's going to work it out according to the purpose so many times god will use circumstances but why must god use circumstances to get you into the purpose of his will why because i I don't understand always how to sit at his feet, how to open up his words so that I will understand where I'm going. If I understand the purpose of his will and how he's there and how I need to fear him and how he will give us the land, then I, if he says, walk around Jericho seven times and uh, the Jerry, Jericho writes, they mock them there from the top and say, what are you think you are doing? And the seventh time, oh, they're getting really desperate, really desperate. Because today they are walking seven times in one day. These guys are really getting uh, desperate with this circus that they are doing. Mocked Noah. What the thing is this? It's so far from a sea or a something. What, 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 what are you building? And if you are not being challenged with God's will in your life, my question is, are you walking with God where he can challenge you in his will? Or are you just in control and with your mindset according to what you think you could do as a favor unto the Lord? As a favor unto the Lord, according to that you will do. You have time for this, but you don't have time for that. You can do this, you cannot do it. You, you cannot attend that thing because... You cannot speak about Christ in that setting because... And you have all the professional excuses why you will not allow God's will to come through. But many times, many, many, many times, He will challenge you with His will. My brother, my sister, and even more and more, 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 more in the end time, more and more in the end time, it will be like in the days of Noah. In the days of Sodom, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. What is one of the major things? The intimidation of society. I write it down. The intimidation of society. How society will mock you. How society will say, 
This is not the norm. What you're doing, you are crazy. You're not allowed to do this. You're not allowed to do this. Until there's somebody that stands up, man with stature, and says, no, this will not go. I'm not going with this. I'm going with the word. Luther, Calvin, all those guys, Wesley. I will go with what the word says, and then revival break forth for every nation on earth. Through that man that stood up against, against, against the rubbish. And stood up in Christ, in the word. Because through the program, through he, what he was supposed to understand, he could bring forth that what was from God. Are you still here? According to the purpose. So you need to see the purpose of his will. And the purpose of his will is not, I need to understand why I need to do this. But the global purpose of he loves me, he has a destiny for me, he has the best for me. And not moan and groan if he will use circumstances, because the circumstances will bring me back to the place of communicating with him. Israel, when everything is fine, then they fall into the rubbish, uh, worship the idols, bring all these khwaras in, the ladies from the other, uh, from the heathen, and do the sexual rubbish, and all this stuff. And then God brings the circumstances, and the circumstances become his servant instead of the people. Instead of his sons and daughters be the servants of God, the circumstances must now be the servant of God. Because you're not willing to stand as the servant of God just to do his will, to hear his will, and that your life will be to, be, to do his will. No. A servant to your own fleshly desires, a servant to your tiredness, or your servant to your flesh, or whatever, ever. A servant to your success, and we must go with the success that you have now. No, man. Now the circumstances become the servant of God, and the servant and the Galdeans and all those Hora enemies of Israel that are, that are full out there in the world, God will use them. Here comes God with that heathen nations. God and the heathen nation is coming to Israel. And the heathen nation is slaughtering Israel, taking Israel away. So that they're in that place. They come into a day where they say, I repent. I come back to you, Lord. I put my heart with you. Forgive me, Lord. And then from that place, God walked with them as the, the servants. Servant, the focus of the name servant is the privilege to honor him with your life. The, honor, the, the privilege to honor somebody with your life. And that somebody, first of all, is God. Because whatever you do, do unto the Lord. Amen. Pharaoh served this devilish, heathen king. That called himself a god and that the nation worshipped him as a god. That was his boss. That's why he went through hell. No. No, 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 no. But that was Pharaoh. And he, he was like this with Pharaoh. This guy that I just described to you. But what he did, Joseph, Moses... Daniel, what he did, he did as if unto the Lord. As if unto the Lord. Moses, Pharaoh, Joseph, Pharaoh, Daniel with all those other, other guys. And even some of them changed and acknowledged the God. And they had respect for his God. People must have respect for your God. We can do what we want, but we need to respect her God. Not even necessarily you, but you have such a life doing it for Christ. You have such a life that you honor your God. Such a life that you will not say unless God says. Such a life that they not your testimony is not they, they honor your, the quality of who you are. No. They have respect for your God. Is it not Matthew 5, 16? Let your light so shine. Your light can shine. But there's a certain level of shining. Let your light so shine that they will see your good works and praise you. And praise your Father in heaven. So shine that when they look at you, they realize, wow, their God must be an awesome God. That they praise you. They're not necessarily serving Christ. 
They're not necessarily serving, serving Christ. But they praise your God because of the good works, how you are living. How you are a living testimony. Predestined to do that. Predestined to do that. Amen. In order that we, who, where we are now, verse 12. In order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ. Let's say, I will put my hope in Christ. So that it might be for the praise of his glory. There we go again. For the praise of his glory. Let me leave that there. Okay. And you were also included in Christ when you heard the message of the truth of the gospel of your salvation. When you believed you were marked, marked, marked in him with a seal. The promise. Holy Spirit. The seal on your life. You know the seal of the king says... It will be so. Whatever is in this letter, if the seal of the king is on there, this will happen. This, what is written here on this letter, is backed by the king of this nation. And you come in that authority into that place. But the seal is the fact that God is with him. God is in him. God is with him. That's the seal. That's why people will recognize the authority that you come with, because they recognize the God that is with you. They recognize the God that is in you. That's supposed to be why they have respect for you. Because they know that God is with you. That's the seal, the authority given to you out there. There's the word. You have the word, but the devil also knows this word. But the seal, the authority given to you, is the fact that you have the Holy Spirit that will remind you of the word and that will explain the word to you and will, that will bring it to life through you. That, at the end of the day, will give you the authority. The Holy Spirit brought the rebirth in your spirit. Like he raised Christ from the dead, you were raised with him, Christ, through the Holy Spirit. And today, so, as he raised Christ from the dead... The Holy Spirit, eh? Romans 8, 11. Let me stay with the 11. Jeremiah 29, 11. Remember that one? Huh? Revelation 12, 11. 11. You were overcome by the blood. No, oh, here we also have the 11. Ah, are you with me? We are wasting time. Is it with me? The seal of the Holy Spirit. So how do you have authority? And only with, if this, the Holy Spirit is so with you, the seal, the seal will not disappear. God will never leave you, never forsake you. Holy Spirit will always be there. But you sit there on the pavilion and you look at the game and you know you and God sitting on the pavilion and he's explaining to you the game that you're going to have, that you're going to face tomorrow, next week. What is the game that you're going to play? What is the race that you need to run tomorrow? And then next to you, this side, you say, oh, this demon of bitterness, this demon of, of performance, this demon of what if I'm not good enough, this demon of rejection, this demon of what will the people say? They also sit with you. But next to you sit the Holy Spirit and he will never leave you and will never forsake you if you have that disgustable manners of ignoring him. If you have such a disrespect for him that you will ignore him and you will just give place for your emotions, your opinions, your demon of pride, focusing on yourself and yourself alone. And they can all sit with you and they all will have something to say about the game that you will face tomorrow. The game that you, placed, that you played yesterday. They will have something to say. But the seal of the Holy Spirit will open it up for you of how much was with God. And how, many, how much of his word was in it, in that what you've done. And he will explain to you how the game will work tomorrow, but he will never explain it outside of this program. Always in the context of the word, he will explain to you tomorrow. He will interpret yesterday. Your interpretation of your past must be through the Word of God as the Holy Spirit shows it. Your interpretation of the life now, today. Your interpretation and your explanation of how it must be tomorrow. Through the Holy Spirit and the Word. 
Then you talk about stability. And then you talk about stability because God started with you right in the beginning, right in the beginning, in a place where we don't understand it because we understand everything in the context of time. But before there was time, heaven and earth, you were there in Christ. Now, if you have the seal, the Holy Spirit, the only place where you can carry the seal of the Holy Spirit is in Christ. On you, you cannot have the seal of the Holy Spirit on you. It's impossible if you're on the flesh because it will be fire and you will be gone. In a trillionth of a second. Your life will be gone. Your life will be gone. He will not put his fire on your sin. It's only on through the cross. Only through the cross, deal with your, the rabbis. Let's deal with the rabbis at the cross. Amen. You with me? But, this, but the seal of the Holy Spirit, your life is in, in Christ. And the seal of the Holy Spirit is on Christ. Is it not Isaiah? They prophesied. And he said, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because he has anointed me to do certain things here on earth he has a mandate for me he has a purpose for me here on earth so the day when jesus stood up son of joseph and he started the day as the son of god explaining to them i'm the son of god i'm not just the son of joseph i'm the son of god that's the scripture he read he took the bible and from isaiah he read the spirit of the lord god is upon me because he has anointed me to do and then he said today this word is fulfilled in your hearing today. He said, I am he. I am he. Are you with me? So the only place that you will have the seal of the Holy Spirit, that is also called, according to the speech in the, in the Bible, the hand of the Father. Like we said many times. The hand of the Father upon your life, my brother, my sister. The hand of the Father on you as you walk as his child. Is the Holy Spirit on you. Is the seal of the Holy Spirit on you. But the seal of the Holy Spirit is only, only on Christ. You are in his body. If you find yourself in Christ, you'll understand the seal of the Spirit. But the seal of the demon of bitterness, the seal of the demon of lust, the seal of the demon of, 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 of lust with masturbation and pornography and all that chamos from hell. You will have it and it will be there because that thing will tell you hey you will take time you will take the time to find the pornography you will take the time and you will meditate on how bad you are you will take the time to to explain in your head and in your heart to to think upon how bad they did unto you how nasty they were how that one belittled you how that one treated my son or my daughter how that one did that you will have the time because the seal of that spirit of religion or self-righteousness or bitterness or fear or anxiety you are sealed with that i give you the authority to stress I give you the authority to fear, and you will fear, and you will do according to the fear that is in you. According to the fear that is in you, so you will do. Klar. Oh, Holy Spirit, according to the life that is in you, according to this word, you will do. If I yield to the Spirit, and He will teach me who I am, He will show me who I am in Christ. In Christ but in your trouble in your stress you are sealed with other demons in your stress in your flesh in your manipulation of relationship in your manipulation of wara 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 and you'll find people with the same spirit just like this boom they are with one another spirit of slavery boom just for some reason spirit of religion spirit of of of, of sexual immorality just like this boom they are together those guys May God help you. May God help me. Where are we in time? In the context. Not outside the context of time. Is that thing right? He says 22, 20 past 2. Somebody did that because they don't want a long sermon. Okay. Where are we now? Verse 14. This is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. 
our inheritance, our inheritance. Okay, I'm going to cut that um, because we are God's possession to the praise of His glory. Once again, praise belongs to His glory. Everybody say, praise, praise. belongs to His glory. When you go on, you find verse 16, you're talking about prayers. I will keep on asking in prayer. In prayer, I will present you to one man, that is Jesus Christ. Bottom line. Bottom line. So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, in this prayer that he says, it's all I present you to Christ so that you understand who you are. Who you are. I will present you to Christ in prayer that you will know who you are in Christ because identity determines destiny. And if you know you're not baboon, you will not act like baboon. If you know you are eagle, you will rise up as an eagle. Are you still here? We're talking about stability. But stability, first of all, if you know where you come from and who you are before time, before heaven and earth. You listen to Hiso? When we talk about inheritance, guys, inheritance, everybody say inheritance. You'll find that, that word inheritance maybe 20 times, 30 times in the book Ephesians. Inheritance, if I don't understand from whom did I get it, I, there's an inheritance that is set aside for you. That person had something in his heart why he gave you the inheritance. He decided, no, you're just going to mess it up. And because you're going to mess it up, I'm giving it to the SPCA. Okay. The SPCA. I cannot tell you this one. Somebody told me uh, I had to go somewhere. And the guy said, no, we're just across the SPCA. And I said, no, it's a long time since I've taken my mother-in-law there. And uh, they laughed and laughed. Said, I've never heard that one before. But luckily that was a joke. Why did I say that? Because the SPCA. Yes. So the inheritance, because that man, that grandfather had his in his heart, he's in his heart, and he realized, according to his purpose, that this is going to mess up my grandchild, or it's going to mess up my child, because they are so into money, they are finding their security so much into money, I'm going to give them the, 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 the temptation to destroy their lives by giving them this 10 million. No. I'm going to leave them something so that they can live, maybe in a house. But this other 9 million SPCA. But God, God has given you an inheritance, blessed you with all blessings in Christ Jesus. Because he has a faith in you that you will not destroy what he has for you. Inheritance means before time, before heaven and earth, before, before, before the concept of time, God knew there's a, there's a destiny that's going to be excellent. Because you're part of his dream that he dreamed about that is more than what he had then in heaven and earth, in whatever heaven place of, of being where he was. But from that time, there was an inheritance. And he had a purpose why you must have this inheritance, why you must have this situation that is around you why you must have that family there was a purpose god inheritance but inheritance that i receive now is beyond now is going into hello so what are you doing with your inheritance will determine your destiny what are you doing with your inheritance will become a hell of a curse or it will be to the praise of his glory to the praise of his glory that through your life people will know you always give god the glory it doesn't matter where you are it doesn't matter in what circumstance you are they cannot get you under because you will just use the bad circumstance to praise god even more and you discourage the enemy <laughs> and this enemy strategy against you because they just know you will praise god in the midst of the storm and that's even worse because when you praise God in the midst of the storm most probably the storm's going to end and we will be disgraced we will have to walk away in shame in whatever we wanted to create around that man we will have to walk away ashamed because he's going to give God the glory he's going to give God the glory and the worst he's going to give God the glory if the storm ends or not he's still going to give God the glory that's the problem from hell for your life 
if, if, if you give God the glory and realize the praise belongs to Him, belongs to His beauty, belongs to His splendor. And you praise Him because of His splendor and His beauty. That's the only reason why you praise Him, not so that circumstances change. Amen. You are, you are still here. Some of you guys, you can see your eyes. That's, no, let me not chase out something. That other Khwara standing there next to you saying, Oh, I'm now tired. I cannot focus anymore. It's the other thing to go in Jesus' name. That's not the person next to you. That's the <laughs> other, that voice. Hallelujah. Okay. We're going for a landing. Where are we now? He has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. In his holy people. Inheritance in his holy people. Oh man, it's, it's a concept once again. A lot of concepts. <sighs> inheritance. God's inheritance is in you. He has an inheritance for himself. He's not just an inheritance that he's giving you for you to go and live out. But at the end of the day, you are his inheritance. Whatever you will inherit in Canaan, he will inherit for you this and this life and life of breakthrough. And life of breakthrough is not the circumstances that change. Life of breakthrough is, is that I can overcome in the midst of the circumstances. That is breakthrough. There's many guys in, in Ukraine and in Gaza and some of these, those places where they have a breakthroughs, breakthroughs, breakthroughs that says, I will honor him in spite of. There's so many kids that are didn't, didn't have food and they're somehow dying there and it's horrific, horrific, horrific stories that you hear and what you see about some of the kids in Gaza, but still they say, we do this for Allah. And if I must be a martyr for Allah, I would use for Allah on the, on, the, on the lips of these small kids that are shaking because of no food, that are dying because of no food, and this and this and this. And on the every second one, every the, the dad died, and the, this one is in pieces, that one is still alive under the rubble, but still uh, um, for Allah. They are with Allah, and we praise Allah. And, and all that you see on their lips, the whole 90% of the time, is how they praise Allah. How much more? Where's the church? Where's the church? But when we go through circumstances, we are throwing it in the past, never again. Throwing a tantrum, throwing a tantrum, and suddenly we are muff. And when you are muff, when you are muff, and you're supposed to just be full of a demonic bitterness against other people, you're supposed to praise Jesus. God, I praise you in the midst of this. That's supposed to be the first thing on your lips. God, I praise you. Because all beauty, all glory belongs to you. All beauty, all glory belongs to you. And I, I need your beauty to be shown in this place. I need your, boat, your beauty to shine in this place. And if your beauty must be sh shown through in this place through me, help me to show your beauty in this place. How Bloemfontein can be beautiful, this nation can be beautiful, destiny can be beautiful, political parties and all this and all, all that stuff that's happening with it. Make sure what you speak. Don't curse the people. Don't be instrument from hell. Remember, we said it and we will say it uh, 27 times again before the forkissen. What is forkissen? Election, yeah. We will say it. You don't curse anybody. They ain't here like this. Those guys, uh, ACDP, they are to this. And this one is to that. And the DP, no, DA, is to like that. The, the EFF, uh, you're talking about people. Don't be an instrument from hell that your tongue is set alight from hell. And what you say about political parties, that people that form put a certain identity with them. You pray for them. You bless them that God's fire will be on them. Not in a bad alternative, not bad motive. But the fire of God will come upon the people. Amen. In the season. Because it's seasons where people say there's destiny, there's not. Seasons where people get angry and say, no, I'm for them, I'm for them. It's seasons where people judge other people. When they start going to vote for this group, 
Like never before in these four years, they are judging other people that are so stupid to, to vote that and to vote that, and they are compromising, they are this. Be careful. Be careful. Pray and do as Holy Spirit guides. Amen? Amen. Thank you. We're going for the learning still. Where, where are we now? The inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength of God. Okay, I must go. Verse 22. And God placed all things. Everybody say all things. All things under his feet. And appointed him to be the head over everything. Let's say, head over everything. All things under his feet. Where are you? In Christ. It's in that passage, it's 10, 15 times explained. You are in Christ. You are in Christ from, from the beginning. But now in your life, what is there? Everything that is not from God is under the feet of Christ. You are in Christ. So if it's, is it under your feet? Yes. Why is the rubbish under your feet? Because you are in Christ and the rubbish are under his feet. And when you are in... Must I say that again? Do you understand the picture? The only place where the rubbish and the chamors and the circumstances can be under your feet is when you are in Christ, in the body of Christ. And you don't have issues with the people or the issues with yourself. Start to learn how to love yourself. Then you will be not so oversensitive when people reject you, when people say something negative. Stop the issues with yourself so that you can love yourself. Let's say, I will stop the issues with myself so that I can love myself the way that God loves me. Because that's when you put your heart with God's heart. If you can love yourself the way that he loves you, now your heart is with God. When you keep the issues with yourself, you don't know how to love yourself, you don't know this, you don't know... Your heart is not with God. But if your heart is with God, you will be able to settle yourself in understanding how valuable you are, how precious you are, what awesome destiny God has for you, and how you're supposed to love yourself with a holy, beautiful love. Let's say, I will love myself. I'll say it better with a better attitude. I will love myself. <laughs> okay. Did you say it? Sanele? <laughs> okay. Is there nog iets zo? You are still here. Maar zo, ik moet eindigen, maar waar is die einde van die vers? Placed all things under his feet and appointed him to the head over every. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. Everything, all the rubbish under your feet. Amen. And then he said, he appointed him to be the head over everything uh, in the, the first lesson of anatomy when you were seven and a half years old where did they tell you where is the head of your body on top are you with me as the head over everything so for you to have any form of authority he must be the head over you let him do the thinking not you Without him, you're going to make some beautiful, rubbish, stupid, mis stupid, stupid mistakes. That's a double mistake, a stupid mistake. You know, please, let him do the thinking. Let him do the planning. Let him give the commands according to the planning, according to the will, according to his thoughts, his purposes, his ideas. There will come just this initiative, and that impulse will be there for this the body to move here, for this to be that, to look that way, to say this, and all that 30, 30 commands all at once to have a certain, a certain impact, to have a certain purpose of going to do something. That is if the body knows how to work together. But if lung decides, I must walk there and the... Or rather, rather the liver. The liver decide I'm going to lay down here and, and the ear wants to go up there. What a freak show it would be. The sky would just pull in every form of direction. And you, at the end of the day, you can go nowhere. 
But too many times in churches, in groups, in families, everyone must go in their own direction by, by, because I'm old enough to make my own decision. What a pathetic, 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 pathetic. Tell this a neighbor, pathetic. Tell your neighbor, pathetic. Because the more you mature you are, the more dependent you will become. The more you ask people. And then we understand how we are all citizens in Christ of one body. Then, when we understand how to work together, then we allow the head to have the final say. There's not the head that has the final say in one part of the body and not in the other one. If God must have the final say in the church, the body will have to work together. If a body don't work together, how can the head say, we're going to move forward, we're going to pray in tongues, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do that. If every member of the body is want to, wanting to go in his own direction, your stature, your stability, the church will become stable because there's a mature company of people that are going to rise up. The rest is going to be there. The rest is going to be there. And in the name of religion, they would be one of the main peanut guys that will crucify and that will want to crucify that what is from Christ in the true company of, of people. It was the religious guys that was the biggest threat against that what was from Christ. Wanted to kill him and after they killed him and thought no, whoa, whoa, then there were a lot of people and then they had to start to yeah, bring tribulation and all that rubbish and, and to the Christians in, in Jerusalem. But then they went further and they spread that gospel. And then it even became even worse. But who was those people? The Romans? No. The religious. The religious people. So may God help you to get the biggest enemy of a relationship with God out of your life. And that is every form of religion, of reading the Bible because you must, or sitting here because you're a full-time student, now you must be in church, you know? Or you felt guilty, so you come to church, or you, you maybe tonight you're going to pray, and you're going to try not to do this, and not to swear anymore, and not to... God's going to help you to, gonna, to get the greatest enemy of your relationship with God out of your life and that is the spirit of religion in Jesus name okay so I'm just saying my brother my sister the enemy the rubbish under your feet the head of the body above you let God have the final say final say final say in every area of your life that people look at your life and say he's not doing the thinking God is doing the thinking in his life. He is not planning. God is planning in his life. He is not having the purpose. There is somebody else that is, that, that somebody else's brain is thinking for him, is planning for him. And who is that other one? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And the head of the body, his thinking is where, like we said a thousand times, in your spirit. Because we have the mind of Christ and do hold the thoughts, the feelings, the purposes of God in my spirit. So the head of the body, whatever the head of the body is thinking, it's in my spirit. Let's say it's in my spirit because I have the mind of Christ. Thank you God that you come and help us. We trust you Lord that you will just come and set us free to understand what we have in you. God, I pray for every man, woman in this place that they will find their stability, not in a flirting with own rubbish ideas, not in a flirting with, with self-justification, not in a flirting with other demons sitting next to them when Holy Spirit wants to show the game that needs to be played this week. Help them, Lord, for the reprogramming. Forgive us for having this relationship with viruses that's actually out there to destroy, to destroy, to destroy the program. The virus that wants to bring a paralyzed life. That I feel paralyzed when I'm supposed to pray. It's paralyzed when I'm supposed to pray. Paralyzed when I'm supposed to testify about you. Paralyzed when I can give you all praise and glory, but then I rather 
flirt with depression and flirt with intimidation and flirt with negativity and flirt with the stress and flirt with the lust and flirt with all the rubbish. Forgive us for that. We walk away from that, Lord. By your grace and your power in the name of Jesus, help us to come to know, to know, to know your word so that we know who we were, who we are before the creation of heaven and earth. Because you've predestined us according to your pleasure. According to your excitement, you created us. Because of the excitement in your heart, you created each one of us. Help us to understand that, Lord, please. I pray that for every man, woman in this place. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And all say, Amen. Amen.